You know, I was really debating with myself whether or not I should do a hate week three for the Asian RMR because I was like, are they even good enough to be frauds? Like, don't you actually have to have some level of expectation? If the Mongols don't blow this, is there anything to talk about? Um, can I be racist towards Asians? These are all questions that I had for myself and I didn't really know how to resolve them. But well, I mean, now that I've also got this piece of news, I figure why not pack it in? Because there's actually some cool stuff to talk about at the Asian RMR. But first, Astralis bent his in-game leader and Danish superstar. His name is Bla Astralis. His name is Blame F. <laughs> <laughs> Some benches in game leader. They try to be so self serious, but like, come on. I saw Richard reading through one of these the other day. It was for, it was NIPs. It was just terrible. Okay, let's just see because Blame left a little comment here. I'll, I'll read in his voice. I always do, by the way, I always, I'm not great at accents, but <clears throat> I've really mastered this one. So listen up. Naturally, I'm really disappointed to be leaving Astralis at a team I hope to bring back to the top. I've enjoyed my time here. I can only speak positively about my teammates and all the great people who work tirelessly to support my team in any way possible. I probably saw it coming. Oh, almost went a little Indian there. As we ha haven't succeeded, even though it felt, when oh, it's focused so much on the accent, I actually wasn't reading, so I don't know what he said. Um, I think it's basically... We tried, we failed. So yeah, that's the closest that we've got to hear his voice since he doesn't do the exit interviews. Goodbye, Blame F. That's actually a heavyweight out, so you know what that means. Bird from Sky is about to swoop in. No, probably not. You know, Birds from Sky, the only problem is a little on the older side, which is not a problem, okay? Some of us are, are aging like wine, but no accomplishments yet. Radar from Sky, which is the last, you know, do Astralis need that kind of PR? And uh, I actually like him, man. I actually like him, but the stats are too low. You can't be fragging like Kerrigan, but have no accomplishments. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this is also not even versus, you know, teams that Kerrigan can really frag versus. So that's, God, I am a little, I'm like, I'm, I am like hating in a little bit. Like I'm being uh, our sartorial asshole right now. So, okay, maybe it is a good time to do it. Should we go backwards through these? Let's hop on to some kind of good news. No, no, no. Is there anything else to talk about? The problem is for Astralis, man. No replacements. What are they going to do for Blame F? Now, this is the move that everyone... It, it made sense, right? This is the move that everyone was kind of calling for. That I was making my last video talking about. Blame F is not a leader. Blame F didn't do that interview. Blame F didn't, doesn't ever hype his team up it's something that actually richard mentioned that i think is really important is that like in terms of being a leader of men like when do you ever see him sort of have that speech have that moment where it feels like people are inspired by him to like be a team and and when he he says in his interviews that the team wasn't playing as a team when they really needed it when they really needed to it's sort of like okay i wonder who's responsible for that so Listen, as an individual player, you know I believe in Blame F, the dude frags at a certain level. If you get two kills around, I said this before, you get two kills around, I don't give a shit if they're both exits. Even that has economic impact. If you're getting two kills every round and, you know, jokes aside, some, most of the rounds are not exits. He's actually getting frags and he does get let down sometimes. There's going to be a somebody that this can work for, okay? I'm gonna, that's like my final line, okay? There has to be somebody that this can work for. You get two kills every round. Somebody's got to help. Uh, got to be able to figure this out, right? There's got to be some team out there where this makes sense. So, I, I think uh, uh, Astral is putting on the bench. It's almost a brave move, but at the same time, they they're probably paying him a pretty handsome salary. They're going to pay him probably I don't know what bench salaries are like half or something like that. But then also open up not only the idea of selling him, but then also the idea of getting someone new, which they need to do that now. So using this period of time is good. Like Nip went right to it when it came to replacing players. Astral is getting right to it with replacing Blame F. They need to do that. So um, I think Blame F is going to work for somebody and makes it's going to make sense. I'm sad the device Blame F combo didn't work. I actually think that this would work if they, ha if they had the right IGL, but right now Blame is actually taking that spot. You know, so he's kind of, he's doing the role. That's the important role they need to do better. And then the other side of it is him as a lurker and like a very consistent fragger is something that they could use. Any team could use, 
But since he's also taking up the IGL spot, they have to make the hard decision. I think it might be the correct one. The only problem is who do you who do you get? How, imagine being Danish and imagine being a premier Danish team and organization and not being able to find an IGL. If Glaive's going to come back to this roster, they all better learn fucking Polish, okay? Because Luke Cash ain't coming back. They don't deserve him, man. Come on. So who who do they get? Who who knows? But yeah, that's it on on Blame F. Shame that didn't work out. All these individual accolades. That's crazy. You know, some players would just would love to have accolades like this. And I'm sure I'm sure it would sort of the balance is you would you would trade maybe half of them for trophies, right? If you had this many. I don't think anyone wants to be remembered as the guy who fragged really hard and never won a single, you know major event so uh what is this this is glue groups right yeah oh S europe finals 2020 is online so uh, yeah someone someone they got to pay a lot for him but he can make a team good he doesn't want an igl which is good i don't know who's gonna use him all right let's keep it going uh, some good news starry the chinese sensation who was 16 years old in 2021 who won v5 g2 do you guys remember this oh sorry i have to play it in this window good night <laughs> this is me and connor casting this this is in 2021 good night Starry at 16 years old, coming in from Lin Vision, 1v5-ing G2 on Lin. There's no way. Oh, sorry. Not on, on Lin. Online. Uh, when they were boot camping in Europe. And what happened was, there was this situation where there was... Oh, sorry, everything is a little bit... Oh, there we go. Um... There are anti-addiction rules in China, which meant that if you were playing playing games as somebody who I think it was under 18, you were not able to play on like Fridays, weekends, or right after school. So it was just a measure um, in China uh, against the ability to sort of like game casually and for up and coming esports players or, or people who were like looking to make a career of this. If in China they they couldn't do anything about it, so he was going to take a two year basically hiatus. Now we're in 2024, and Starry not only qualifies to the major, but he does it in fucking style, man. This is so sick to see. Starry, Lin Vision beat Greyhound 2-1, and Starry goes 50 and 30 of the 1.56 rating over these three maps. They dumpster Greyhound on Nuke, and this is a very bad look for Greyhound, and I'm about to, about to get in it. There's actually going to be some um, overlap here between the Blame F drama. <laughs> Um, from the RMR exit and some of the flack that he caught for not getting the uh, interview, for not doing the interview. Um, this is amazing. I mean, this is amazing to see. And so we got a full Chinese lineup that have made it through racists on top. We don't have the Australian lineup to make it through. So that's like actually just balances out. I guess I guess racists win no matter what in this situation. Obviously, okay. By the way, the joke is for <laughs> people who might just be like, "Why does he keep talking about racism?" I'm just cheering for one team, one strong team from every region, every country to be able to to have a good team. Not even about this major, just in general. It's just something I, I I've been cheering for. So we got a Chinese team through to the major. That's awesome. It was never going to be Tai Lu for me, man. They they've been they have not been impressive since like what was it? Malmo or something like that. There was like a tournament back. It was many years ago, man. I, I can't remember the last time I've been impressed watching a Tai Lu game. Lin Vision, though, when he saw them at Blast a couple years ago, they sparked my attention. I was excited about Starry. This team is good, man. And uh, Greyhound, listen, they tried, they failed. And Dexter just went back to Australia to play with this lineup. So, you know, that that's like a cool thing, right? That's really a cool thing. But man, Dexter got beat the hell up for this. Okay, so there were a couple of tweets that did not look good on him, and this actually kind of shows you why Blame F decided to say nothing after the RMR. Okay, 
So, so Dexter says, I hope the next RMR and quality of life things for players at tournaments will be better. Everyone played in the same systems, no excuse will be lost, but being forced to play sub 20, 240 FPS systems and uneven tables in 2024 sucks. Okay. So he said that first and I'll just show this first. Okay. Cause somebody replied and said, here are the specs from the, um, from the RMR. These are the perfect world specs which is 4070s or 4090s and uh, these pretty new Intel processors. This is the, I think this is from the CAC 2023, which was in November or something last year. So not long ago. New PCs, good setups. Now, that doesn't mean that Dexter's PC had good performance, right? But boy, did he get destroyed. I've never seen that. I didn't even know there were this many Chinese fans on Twitter. 989 comments here. 90 percent uh him getting body bagged by chinese fans here on twitter um not jealous of this at all i i I've actually found it pretty exciting that there's this many chinese fans on twitter so i actually think that's cool but i do feel a little bit bad here for dexter because again i mean we don't know if uh, if he had a problem with his PC and he just thought everyone else was on the same shit. Now, the thing is, he didn't get beat up for that tweet specifically. Well, he did on this one because this is the main tweet on his exit tweet, sadly. And he goes, fucks that shit. We lost, we just lost control in swing rounds. Fuck, first major missed in two years. That's a tough feeling. Getting, exiting from the RMR, that's tough. That is really tough. Been on an Australia packing Australian teams. Didn't get us fully ready for this tournament. Ooh, saying that Australian teams are a bit shit or not good enough practice. That's a John. If you play Melee, you know what a John is. That's an excuse. Uh, just got to dig in a little more for the rest of the season. You, been practicing in Australia. Been practicing. Been in Australia practicing Australian teams. Didn't get us fully ready for this tournament. You know, the part that kills me about this is, is seeing the Mongols thrive. Okay. Because not only did they thrash the Asian RMR as well as Greyhound themselves, um, and have this highlight round. Let's just get this Children out of the way. Assume that the rotation is going to be slower from CT. He's right, but it's not going to be slow enough. Oh. What's Melon would do? And back through the flames, he goes to safety. Four on three, the retake is on, a lot of utility, the A main smoke goes out, it'll be blocking our blitz, he will be content with pushing through, but he's got to do it while Techno's still alive. Great Molotov donor, delays them for a little while longer, there's only one avenue of assault that could come through, Blitz has got a flash lined up for Techno to peek as well, what a flash play, there goes Techno, looking oh. for more, it's three, it's four! That could not have gone better. That was big money, right? Holy fuck. That was literally looking like twists. Okay. Techno 4K, the guy who joined the Mongols, because somebody on the Mongols who was on the team before him, when Techno was like 15 or 16 years old, broke his hand smashing a table after he lost a bad round. Techno 4K came in to sub for him and played so well they kept him. Okay. Techno 4K at 16 years old cucked another Mongolian man in order to get onto the Mongols so that he could carry them to a major years later. That's why we have great storylines in Counter-Strike, and that's why we watch this game. Okay? So, uh, listen, this isn't a good look. What the fuck is that? Literally shits on other Australian teams here. That's not a good look. I mean, this might be fully true. <laughs> <laughs> it might be fully true, but it's not a good look. Not from, you know, and again, this is like no joke. Unironically, this is like a good reason why you don't say anything. If you're like, blame F after a whole situation, like uh, losing an RMR. You don't get anyone to reply to you. You don't get any flack. You do risk it saying the the wrong thing. But as a leader, you just have to say the right thing. Like You have to say something and you have to say the right thing. It's a lot of responsibility. You are kind of like Batman sometimes, but that's the level that you have to step up to. So been in Australia, practicing us Australian teams, didn't get us fully ready for this tournament. I mean, whatever, bro. It's like you, you had a two-year boot camp in Europe playing with the best of the best. You're supposed to bring that over to Australia and that discipline and everything. I'm sorry. It's hard to feel bad, and I understand why you know you might get some hate for that. Just got to dig in a little bit for the rest of the season. And obviously, this is an emotional moment for Dexter, and we do have to remember just because this is the Asian RMR, these, the, the people over here, even though it's not the hard-as-fuck EU RMR and you realize when you get through that you just literally survived like seven layers of hell, it's 
still these teams are still fighting for a, a spot uh, at the major that's even harder to get because there's less teams and well not harder in some sense because there's less teams um, and are obviously working with worse practice sure they all have that excuse but they're all in the same bin man like so I, I don't think anybody's I don't know the, the, this is one of those moments where it's like wow maybe I learned a lesson that's tough um, and yeah it's tough when you get kicked when you're down uh, this is another clip from Billy Billy of course I don't understand anything but it's um, it's uh, confirming that the PC setups were were good uh, 13 1300 13,700 KFs RTX 48, bro, my computer's from like four years ago. It's good enough, okay? I don't know what is wrong with it. Get Hit up frequency, you need your systems fixed, okay? Because he's the guy. So yeah, this is tough. Uneven tables, I don't know. Don't don't know about that one. Um, they can, there, are, there can be legitimate excuses, but it's all about the optics, really, with what you want to say. So that's tough. And the Mongols, I love them, bro. I love them. I mean... They make me so happy, especially like, cause like this whole racism thing for me, right? The thing that just warms my heart when it comes to racism is especially the smaller countries and the countries that have less options and less, the less amount of people, less choices with who they team with. And they decide to stick together and they show how much they can do. It reminds me of Armada playing melee in Sweden and practicing against bots and then coming over to America and giving it to Mango. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's. That, like you can build that discipline you can learn off game tape you can play better than your circumstances if you try hard enough and if you're smart enough and maybe if you have a leader like blitz who i said could save astralis that's what i said um but uh of course that would go against everything that i stand for when it comes to race theory okay so we don't want uh we don't want blitz going to astralis it was just saying it was just saying that he could save him you know with one hand tied behind his back i'm not saying that he should but it's just funny. I tweeted this today, and Blame F gets cut the same day. Coincidence? Does he know? Guys, head on over to the Boxer Movement Club to get yourself some exclusive merchandise. Join the BMC. Make an account, at least. Head on over. And the Graveyard Votes are about to roll in uh, for the first to bring back a couple items from the Graveyard. There has been a lot of votes, and that's actually a very close vote this month. So make sure you go check that out. All right. Um... Asome, best CS2 headphones on the market, baby. I'm going to see you guys in the next one. I, I didn't expect to make a news video, but we decided to do it. Fraud Watch, week three, Asia Aramar. And now we go on to NA. If Liquid don't make it through, bro, I'm out. <laughs>